Summarizing, in very three, four, five, seven sentences, what is semantic about your project? And you will record it. Do you remember what I was going to do? So if you use Uema, a synchronous scale app. It's a, it's a framework for implements and it fits on top of it. So there's nothing, there's nothing explicitly semantic about it. That's what, that's where it was coming from. When we had the conversation, when I proposed the idea, remember it was called Watson, Watson and Noesis? Your uh, project that I, you know, say title of the project, I'm doing this project, and then describe what is semantic about it, right? You, um, just as a matter of consideration, you can say, here is the kind of data I deal with. In this data, uh, I'm able to um, recognize certain patterns or structure that reflect the intent, that reflect the meaning. I'm able to understand, convert syntax into something that is meaningful, that can be tagged. I'm able to uh, convert structure into something that is meaningful, that can be tagged. I'm using some background knowledge base. I'm using some ontology. Uh, that, again, gives me the reference point for which I'm uh, tagging something or annotating something and which thereby gives semantics, or that I'm um, bringing together the data in this particular way, so when they combine together, it gives me further meaning or insights. Ultimately, semantics as a word, uh, you're trying to convey that this was, you are associating meaning with the data. You are, um, uh, you are uh, potentially using something that where there is agreed upon interpretation of what something means or stands for. You are um, uh, taking the data and making closer to decision making, uh, application, actionable information. All these are the forms in which semantics plays a role and this is what you would bring about in discussing how you are uh, supporting semantics, how you are uh, describing the data, as how you are em um, embodying semantics onto the data, how you are adding the semantics to the data, how you are analyzing the data to glean semantics out of it, to associate meaning to it. That is what we are trying to do. All right, so well, let's start here. And look at that. some restriction on the relationship names or do you have some way of up, um, you know, uh, upscaling or uh, what you call uplifting uh, the information?
And how does that property give you semantic sort of meaning or understanding or anything like that? So because of that, we need to uh, we need to create a subset of property in the formal semantics of academia. So in the academia, right, they have a set of property, set of uh, resources, and um, they provide um, a meaning from uh, one property to um, one pair of resources. So that is called the extension of the property. Mm. So that property becomes the universal property. Mm. Well, uh, I'm looking for a little bit more clear uh, specification or you know explanation of what is semantics. What um, I think it would be useful to learn how not to talk about RDF as a semantics, for example. RDF is simply a language for representing semantics. But there is something more to that, and I'm not clear from hearing you exactly where that is. So let's say here, right, I can create a new, let's say, let's say A is a friend of B. And I want to say that A friend of B, um, it, is, it started like 10 years ago. So that is the A friend of B is a football friend. Mm. And what I want to propose is this A friend of one B. So now the, not the friend of, but now this friend of one. And then I talk about friend of one, it started like 10 years ago. So all of them are syntax, right? But how do I, because this is new in the academia, so how do I interpret that in the semantics of the academia? Okay. Let me uh, show the hand of how many of you understood uh, uh, the answer of, uh, to my question uh, that Wing gave. How many of you understood uh, the role of semantics how does he, her work support semantics?
goes for what Wayne said too. If I had worked with reification before, I would probably understand what you're saying better. Is it necessary to understand reification for uh, what you're saying? No, no. he he told me. Yeah. 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 What about yours? Different stages, uh, technical work, uh, Jim Handler's done technical work somewhat. And, uh, but in this class, we didn't do that. Huh? In this class, we didn't do that kind of technical stuff. Right, right. No, but <laughs> there's still, you know, to be able to explain the end result, the value, without necessarily having to discuss the technical thing is uh, something we need to learn. Which I know is a problem. Mm -hmm. And why semantic, and in that problem context, uh, how semantics helps to ease that problem? to help the person who is coordinate who is working as coordinator during disaster that is will help will coordinate resources being asked for people and resources being provided so one of the problem i'm dealing when i'm trying to use semantics is the coordinator needs to know that what are the specific needs arising at city level area level and at some state level. So with that being said, I'm trying to identify locations from the tweet text. So once I get location, if I have a knowledge base so that I can annotate my location with that knowledge base, that will help me to answer once I annotate that using knowledge base, that will help me to answer that um, Okay, this is a particular location where a need is arising. Then this location is in us in this particular state. It's in this particular city. It's in this particular area. So for that, this is one reason I'm using knowledge base to answer those questions. Second is I'm identifying uh, what are the kind of resources that are being asked by people and that are people willing to provide. So somebody can say that uh, I need a first aid kit. I need, uh, we need uh, some bottle of bloods and that kind of. So that all goes under the category medical. So if I have a knowledge base covering all this information that all these are a subclass of medical, then a coordinator can easily have an information what are the specific needs in the medical? What are the specific needs in say shelter? What are the specific needs in the city? So this is how I'm uh, using semantics and these are the questions that can be answered using the semantics in the field. All right, who understood, who did not understand what is semantic about this one? Everybody? Because I'll ask you to explain. Uh, and okay, tell me who understood what is semantic about this project?
Philippines buy that monastery. So, the goal of my project is to bring um, the text processing capability that's used in IBM's Watson uh, to bring to, um, I guess, to make it usable by you know, people at Noesis. So, I'm going to be deploying a, a framework called UEMA AS for asynchronous scale out. Uh, the goal of it is to bridge the gap between unstructured text. And, uh, um, and syntactic and structural metadata, bringing that toward semantic metadata. Um, yeah, so it does this in a distributed fashion. Uh, in order for it to be done at web scale, or like Watson did, ingested the entire Wikipedia, you don't want to do it on a single machine. So um, in order to make it web scale, or for any sizable corpus, you need to have some mechanism just building a collection of sample applications and some concise documentation to actually make it accessible instead of having anyone who wants to work with that technology read the book on it because their documentation is literally a book. Um, trying to simplify that documentation and just put it into you know, a short, small number of easy steps to follow so that it brings it into the hands of um, general users. Is there any specific application that we already have that can be uh, start using the, this framework that you are going to see? Yeah, there's there's one that I'm working on for work uh, called Credos. Mm -hmm. does text processing on uh, drug abuse, drug abuse form text. And um, currently that takes, so maybe someone can fill me in on how many hours it takes to process patterns on the entire corpus of a million posts. It's five or six six hours. We're hoping to speed that up so that when new text processing patterns are being run, it could be done, um, hopefully, in the order of minutes instead of hours. So. All right. So the same question to all of you. Did you understand? Uh, yes? Hands? No. Hands. Who did you understand? One, two, three. So, um, uh, very, uh, speaking, there are a lot of uh, systems where we need to add intelligence or semantics requires text processing. And there needs to be a framework for text processing. And within the text processing, then you, for example, run, let's say, minor. Mm -hmm. uh, that will look for name of a person, look for address, look for uh, value, like say, the do dosage of a drug. Mm -hmm. And all this processing has to be done in a highly scalable manner. So the IBM's UIMA infrastructure, uh, uh, unstructured information management architecture, something like that, right? Yeah, uh, is an uh, open source uh, a tool uh, that is allowed, and it, it's, uh, it's also uh, uh, you can set it up for distributed processing, so a large amount of text can be processed um, in a shorter time. And so this is an infrastructure on which you can build additional semantic uh, uh, processors. So this itself does not add. Deeply using it because just text processing framework per se. Okay, uh, our project is a 
Twitter harassment analysis, and what the goal of our project is, is to um, determine based on a tweet whether or not it's um, one user harassing another. And the way we're doing this is we submit a list of filter phrases that, that we hand selected to, um, that are generally used when um, harassing or bullying somebody. And then we also use a classifier to classify the emotion of the tweet so we can kind of tell whether they're joking or angry or you know, the difference between those. And then we also use um, the conversation history and some of the networking facts about the two users to help score whether or not um, it's possibly um, a single harassment tweet or a group of harassment tweets or fight back and forth. So just to determine whether or not it's serious between the two users. So, yeah. no, so the, the semantic part of that is, you know, we're going from just a text, a memes, text, tweet, and using all the background stuff. So, you know, the classifier, um, you know, whether the two users are in the same social circle, same age, same location. Any of you understood the rule of semantics here? <coughs> and who did not understand the rule of semantics? So it's not real like, a, you know, we're not extracting entities or things like that from the tweets or building up any sort of ontology or anything, but the semantic part of that is um, using, you know, whether or not the two users, like, you know, it's one thing for me to, uh, you know, say, I hate Obama or mm -hmm. something like that, or a celebrity, and then that's different from if, you know, I said that to Curtis, who's, you know, my same age in the same area, the same social circle, you know, me saying it to Curtis may be an instance of bullying, whereas me saying that about Obama on Twitter is just me venting or ranting or whatever. It's not really a bullying. But when we define semantics as associating meaning to data, mm -hmm. then uh, the forms in which we associate meaning to data uh, takes many, many, you know, uh, are multitude, many forms, right? Uh, just saying that here's the name of a person is one for, you know, example of but so is, for example, here is the intended use of the data. Here is the intention of this piece of writing. That's also, you know, giving you some meaning uh, to what it is, uh, right? So sentiment is a part of the meaning. Emotion expressed by content or natural language is a part of the meaning. Uh, and, uh, you know, whether that uh, it maps into a high level uh, social process, uh, harassment, bullying, these are stuff that, uh, you know, are in the, you know, natural world. Uh, in our, you know, interpersonal uh, context also, they are in, you know, sociological uh, items. And when you're trying to associate, understand the text in the context of this high level uh, constructs, then the, again, it is a form of semantics. And if, if you, uh, just to uh, give you an example, in the case of, uh, say, Twitter system, the form of semantics come by analyzing the data from spatial, temporal, thematic, mm -hmm. so where it suddenly happened. Uh, so, uh, for example, if you're going nearby a store, uh, then doing advertisement for that store is a semantic, is a form of semantic thing to do, mm -hmm. right? Um, or where is there, there a need for a particular aid during uh, Katrina. Well, that's, you know, again a semantic example. Another is people content network. Who is a person talking about it? Who does he communicate with? Network, who, who are the people who are associated with that? Do they work as a group to get something done, right? Um, uh, and uh, then sentiment, emotion, subjectivity, analysis. These are, the, again, uh, are different facets of semantics as beyond just identifying name of person or name of location and so on. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gorish? Between the same sentence, uh, this, this, and to that, 
Those technology itself, the semantics comes from unintended relationships. So um, uh, uh, there was a while ago when I had used uh, the term, uh, I used this phrase, semantics and the heart, relationship and the heart of semantics. Or relationship at the heart of semantic web. I think that was the title of one of the keynote or paper I gave in I think 2003. So fundamentally, you know, you associate meaning by through the relationship, through the properties, through linking. Right? And the idea goes way, way, way back. A lot of people have talked about it. In particular, um, whenever Bush, when he talked about as we may think, and he talked about trail using. He talked about uh, the important role of relationships, connecting one concept to another concept to another concept. And that is how human brain, uh, you know, operates and thinks, uh, and you know, forms the ideas and follows up uh, one concept or another. And uh, relationship has been identified for many long, I mean, for for a long time as the linchpin of semantics. And you can't conceive of uh, uh, representing semantics without relationship. In fact, relation, uh, semantics comes by relating one thing to another thing. Well, we know that Tiger Woods is a name of a person. With that, we can say Tiger, you know, this is Tiger Wood and that person in Godford. And not Tiger in the wood and Tiger is separately from the wood as the two separate words coming in a single sentence. right? Uh, so I saw a tiger in the woods. Well, not that, but this tiger wood as a person. And that you are more making it explicit by associating that occurrence to tiger wood in the ontology or some knowledge expressions as a qualified name of a person who has other properties like he is a sports person, a golfer, and so on and so forth. And the moment you associated this word tiger wood to the concept tiger wood, you are now associating with that all the things surrounding that concept tiger wood. It's not just tiger wood as in you know a node there. All the edges with that also become viable uh, as a context for understanding this thing further. So other terms that may have come next to the tiger wood, saying it tiger wolf, uh, tiger woods played at uh, Augusta National. Now what you might find is that here in the Tiger Wood, in the knowledge base, you know Tiger Wood has played at all these golf courses, one of them being Augusta National. Now you can make a concrete sense because this co-occurs. The, here the word Tiger Woods and Augusta National co-occur, and here in the model, conceptual model or ontology, Tiger Wood and, uh, is related to Augusta National as something that he plays at, a tournament he plays at, right? This is how the semantics is built, right? This is how semantics is Our project name is uh, Social Signal in Healthcare. So basically we are uh, dealing with the real-time toy and uh, we have a set set of domain, first is cancer and second is diabetes and we have a set of question for both of them and what we are doing, we are extracting the content of URL which are in tweets and tweet itself <coughs> also and what we are doing like we are extracting patterns uh, according to the, our questions. Suppose question is how to control our diabetes, so we are extracting what are the prevention methods given in a tweets. So we are extracting those answers from the tweet and you are the content of the tweet. Once we get the, those patterns, we are showing to the user as a question and answer of the tweet, uh, question of, of the answer uh, of, <coughs> as a pattern. And what we are doing as well, we are extracting some kind of entities uh, and making as a triple also. Suppose we found some kind of entities, suppose Obama, so exa example I'm giving. And uh, we are, linking with the tweet ID with the Obama and storing as a triple. So what we are using uh, this triple as a, suppose the Obama we are showing as a answer to the for particular question. So user can click on that uh, co uh, entity and get all kinds of uh, tweet related with that time. So what are the tweet are related with the uh, Obama? So he will can 
or she can get it all these kinds of things. So we are giving an answer for particular questions to the user. So here not all automatics, some kind of pattern or human involvement are also there. Yeah, I mean that's what we also are planning to use UEMA for this purpose to we don't know how successful we'll be, but we are planning to use it to kind of to perform or <coughs> to bring out a structured format from the unstructured tweets that we have collected. Presently, we have uh, filtered, we have all uh, uh, diabetes and cancer related tweets that we are performing the analysis. So we are going to go ahead and try to do the. Alright, so the question is to you who did not get this, uh, the semantic aspects of this project? Anybody wants to, uh, so everybody got it? Uh, or anybody wants to give any inputs to uh, them? Uh, uh, did they get the messages through very well or is there some other way they could have done? Okay. No, no comments from anybody else, but I think you guys did a good job. Uh, 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 of course, with more time, you could have structured it better and make it more streamlined as to how we present the behavior otherwise presented. So, all right, Sanjay, and do look at uh, the Thank camera you. unit. Thank you. Yeah, Sanjay and Dev, yes. So, uh, we are working on uh, temporary ranking uh, entities. So, we rank entities based on uh, their popularity in the context of an event. For this, we are using Wikipedia as our knowledge base. We manually select the uh, Wikipedia <coughs> page of any event. Uh, that's our starting point. And uh, then we rank the entities involved in this event based on their popularity. So we uh, take information both from tweets and this uh, Wikipedia, the Wikipedia pages of all the entities involved in this event. Uh, there are two main aspects of uh, semantics that we use. One is identification of uh, entities in the tweets, which we are using, uh, which we are doing using uh, DBpedia Spotlight. Second is um, we're using uh, co-occurrence. Uh, what we're trying to do is uh, measuring the co-occurrence or frequency of co-occurrences of entities in the um, Wikipedia, which are the entities identified from the Wikipedia page, versus uh, their co-occurrence in the tweets that we identify. For example, say on we are tracking the event we have selected is Hurricane Sandy. So for that event on say 28th October. Um, Stafford, New Jersey was in the news a lot. So that entity we pick from the Wikipedia events page and we see that tweets, we get a lot of tweets with uh, uh, occurrence of Stafford, New Jersey. So then we increase the popularity of that, that entity on that particular day as concerned with this event. So the use of co-occurrence is just one measure. So we are using a couple of other measures, but this is the semantic measure that we are using. So these are the two main aspects of semantic. He explained uh, quite a good detail about uh, what we are doing and uh, how semantic is being used. Uh, one thing uh, I can add is we, uh, apart from tag co uh, entity co-occurrences, we use Wikipedia uh, page views also. That's a, a static so measure that we use and co-occurrence is a static measure. So by, by combining these two, we try to come up with the ranking. Use of example. So, guys, did you get the role of semantics here? Mm -hmm. no? Comment? No? Can you break just for a moment? All right, the guys come over, switch over so that you can see Stan. Uh, so, uh, Mary Shwanji and I uh, are working on a project called SemHell. And the two main goals of this project are to take the existing uh, K Health application uh, developed here at Noasis and bring it to the uh, new the the new standard of uh, called OpenNet Health, and then beyond that, we want to enhance the entire this entire new system with semantic web technologies. And uh, specifically, we're uh, we're extending the semantic sensor network ontology to describe the sensors used by K-Health and their observations and values. And then using that as a background, as background knowledge, uh, we annotate
annotate the values coming from uh, the chaos, uh, chaos sensors. And then finally, since we this OpenM Health architecture describes a, well not finally, but this is open uh, M Health architecture describes a server-based storage unit. We're uh, swapping out the normal relational data store for a triple store, uh, which allows us to store all these annotations and give a more fast, uh, give a faster search across uh, all of our uh, sensor data. You guys have something to add? It's like the uh, why we are using this uh, K Health uh, mobile MD app. Uh, why we are converting this mobile MD app to Open M Health standard because our purpose is to remove the heterogeneity of data among the various health apps. Like we are using various health apps for measuring. Uh, this uh, the sleeping hour or the distance we walk, our health issues, all that. But the thing is, those uh, health apps are co maintaining different standards. That why that's why we are not able to extract all those details for a single person. Like for a person, uh, we are trying to extract the details for the uh, distance he walks or the hours of sleep, like that stuff. We are not able to extract all those stuff from uh, different apps because they are maintaining different uh, standards. So OpenM Health, uh, Open M Health has declared some standards. We are uh, following those standards over uh, Mobile MD uh, Mobile MD app, which is a health app developed in Noises. Our purpose is to uh, bring that K, uh, Mobile MD app over to that standard so that it can co communicate with different health apps and we can. Uh, app can communicate different data for a person. It's the overall goal. So that's okay, right. just uh, why don't you recap maybe exactly where the semantics is going you know, here beyond the use of uh, openness and uh, standards and such. Uh, there are like three uh, levels or a level of semantic here. First of all, as a foundation part for semantic, uh, we uh, definitely, because we have like different sensors, so for that uh, we need to have like a vocabulary for like uh, we have a, uh, we have to use the ontology so for that purpose we extended the SSN ontology which is already exist and uh, the sensor uh, and ontology so we added the instances for two observation we had for the heart rate and blood pressure and the weight uh, so that's one part of semantic another part is after we extended that ontology we use that ontology for annotate the uh, data from the three app we have, uh, by, uh, yeah, three devices we have. So, uh, and then because we annotated those data with the value, and also we also have back to somehow uh, our reasoning uh, over to other ontologies if, if we can find that uh, for get more information, medical information or personal profile. Uh, and then uh, after this annotation, uh, we, because we have also the Store, uh, and we that, so uh, we can do the All right, so um, what's the verdict? Who did not get the semantic aspect of this? Did you have anybody caught? Caught the semantic? Yeah? Okay, all right, then. Okay, yes. The soft skills on Project Back considerably before because it was getting a little bit uh, too much. So I've kind of scaled it back to basically the goal of it is, is, is we can we do like ontology generation like using the web's knowledge base. So Stanford parser is kind of what I'm going to use for my API. I'm going to try and get Stanford parser to just work with sentences. So one kind of basic, basic sentence, nothing too complex, have the Stanford parser kind of identify parsing. because it'll give you like, you know, it's an object, this is, I think this, what this is, kind of tell you what it is. But as far as that is all the same parser will tell you, basically parts of it. So the goal then is to use the web as a knowledge base to try and figure out what are those objects it finds. Let's say like JP Morgan's a company, but it doesn't know, you know as a company, right? Well, that's it. What, what else is it? So basically using the existing knowledge database of the web, because it's a huge, it's a huge unstructured knowledge database. So we can actually pull information from that into a structured form, basically doing automated ontology generation from sentences typed in. It could then be the foundation for a search engine later on. That's kind of the goal I've kind of targeted towards 
So what, level, what, level, what kind of objects will you specifically <coughs> in Bitcoin? The, the big objects, just you know, like companies, nouns, things like Rice University, University mm -hmm. of Dayton. Mm -hmm. Start start with easy things first, not like mm -hmm. you know generic things. Like bird, what type of bird is it? I mean, you can find those things so, later. So we had seen the example of Open Calais, mm -hmm. right? Uh, is that what you are trying to do something uh, uh, same as or uh, similar to that? How does it relate to Open Calais kind of uh, thing? Well, kind of, it's kind of like that, I guess, but the, the difference I'm trying to use, I'm trying to basically make a pre-existing database out of a bunch of, I mean, because the internet's over years just got bigger and bigger, there's no, real, there's no real structure to it, there's kind of structure, but if I can basically make a database that can never be dynamically changing, so where you can say, okay, well, now I've found, you know, there's a tree structure, and I've identified these words to be, you know, like, um, JP Morgan's a company, the CEO, but CEO just leaves. Well, so a user put in that ontology as an expert, then it's not dynamic, mm -hmm. right? So then you can say, well, you know, something's happened now. Well, there's a new CEO. This is like kind of automatic ontology generation, but it's still dynamic because it can use the web as its knowledge database. And are you dependent upon the uh, external technology to tell you the type of object you find, or are you are doing anything to find the type of object? Say this is a, a name of a location. This is a name of a person. This is a name of a company. How do you know that? And so you depend upon the Yes, yeah, so right, yeah, right now. Is it technology to be yeah. there? Yeah. All right. Um, did people understand what this is about and how? Who thinks this is not much semantic? Or did you get? Who did not get the role of semantics here? Okay, explain what is the role of semantics here? Is uh, using. So there is a project, uh, you know, at CMU and one at uh, uh, University of Washington. Uh, I think one of the name is Know It All, uh, and the name of the other project, where the idea is to extract the, uh, uh, the process the entire, all the documents on the web and extract the knowledge base. Okay. And even the progress is the same. Progress, that's the same. Progress is the same. Progress is the same. That's Microsoft. Progress is a little bit more advanced in terms of the kind of relationship, right? Uh, it is still is easily, but they have CERN-EP and all these uh, numbers. Yeah. Yes. But basically, NLP kind of approach they are trying to get the easy relation between the concept, using the whole data. So in, at least in your report, you'll have to, you want to see those two, three projects and just see, if, you know, even if you're doing a part of it, that's fine, because those are multi-million dollar project, million dollar project. Okay. All right, go on. So, uh, my work is basically given an EMR document of a patient. My work is to annotate that EMR doc document against the ICD-10 codes, uh, which has become a mandatory thing for every healthcare industry. So, this involves, uh, there is already a system which can annotate the EMR document against the UMLS codes, but Mapping the UMLS course directly to ICD-10 course is not trivial. So, uh, there is a lot of uh, subclass kind of thing. Let me tell you, give you a small example of this. Uh, in the EMR document, they might they might mention uh, renal hypertension, which is a subclass of the hypertension. And we have we have an ICD-10 code which has hypertension, not the renal hypertension. So we need to use some kind of ontology which has all these subclass sub subclass things and and be able to say that uh, renal hypertension is a subclass of hypertension, so ICD-10 re code representing hypertension is actually the code for this EMR document. So in that way, I'm using ontology to get the hierarchy of all the diseases. And also, uh, in the ICD-10 ICD course are very specific, uh, in which they say that uh, if a disease is not, if a particular condition is not there in the EMR document, then it represents a different ICD-10 code. So I want to, uh, check that whether that pattern is there in the e, uh, in the EMR document or not. So in that way, I'm using uh, more expressive language like Sparkle to see whether a pattern exists in the 
semantic aspects here or clearly enough everybody has found semantic what is semantic about this right well it's exciting uh, if you if you just kind of stand back and um, uh, review the projects that you just heard about um, you see projects involving um, enterprise uh, data you see projects involving uh, social data you see projects involving sensor data so I think we got a reasonable we didn't have much in terms of cloud per se, but that's okay. Um, but a good bit of you know variety of uh, uh, how we are empowering um, all the kind of data we find in Web 3.0 using semantics is something that you guys are, are covering. Um, so uh, with that, then um, uh, remember tomorrow noon we have a, a talk uh, on Jeopardy how Watson built Jeopardy, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, beat out uh, the two Jeopardy um, long-time winners or, or, you know, the, the winners of the Jeopardy contest itself. Uh, that's at noon in the atrium, and there'll be pizza after that, so all the more reason to join. Uh, Chris Welty is visiting us, and uh, around three o'clock in this room, we are going to meet again. Um, I suggest that you uh, think of that as your Thursday class. Uh, it's not a requirement that you come, but you're welcome to come and encouraged to come because you've learned a lot of things here. And um, um, let's hope we'll have a rather robust discussion. Uh, uh, we'll learn um, Watson is being used in a number of uh, semantic applications, I would call. Um, it'll be, of course, wonderful for us to ask uh, Chris Valdi, uh, what does he think of semantics per se? How much of this is semantic? How much of this is non-semantic per se? Where does he draw the line? Um, uh, the, to what extent they use so anything like ontology or knowledge basis? Do they build it? Do they, how do they maintain it? Um, an example of uh, uh, Watson's use in medicine that I have seen include uh, prediction of uh, re-hospitalization of chronic heart patients. Um, uh, using unstructured data. So they use both structured data, uh, in the administrative data in electronic medical records and unstructured data, physical notes. And they uh, found 18 factors uh, to be features uh, because it's kind of used for machine learning so that, you know, that identifies the features to play a predominant role in predicting rehospitalization of, you know, how sick the patient would be, for example. And so it'd be good to ask, uh, is, is how much of this uh, result relates to that specific data sets versus uh, would the results be different for different data sets and so on and so forth. Um, and um, uh, they found uh, that they were very successful in doing so. Uh, they not published that as a technical result, that's just a white paper. But so, they, so we can ask more detailed questions as to how they do that. Uh, there was a video that I shared with you in, the, in our community, rural community. Um, whereby, uh, you know, there is a, uh, you know, clip on how uh, you can ask Watson about oncology questions. So the oncologists are um, in Dallas are asking uh, Watson about the case and um, uh, at least IBM's PR claims that um, a typical oncologist is correct only 50% of the time and Watson is correct 90% of the time. Now this is a huge you know, implication if this is true. Uh, on one hand, we are probably not going to still allow Watson to make decisions on healthcare for us, and yet Watson is going to, uh, is claimed to be more accurate than um, an oncologist, oncologist, right? A, a, an average oncologist. That's something, uh, you know, of sign tremendous significance. And what is the role of um, semantics here? What is the role of text processing here? How much large text do they consume? Uh, what is the role of uh, uh, creating structured data, uh, you know, uh, and structured knowledge base in what they do? And um, uh, it is very important to understand uh, 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 exactly what problems are solved in a deterministic way versus in a way that is not deterministic and things that are ranked kind of thing and prioritized kind of stuff. So it will be very interesting to see. I don't, um, um, at the same time, um, uh, as I was uh, writing uh, uh, you know, piece for our um, own uh, social networks, I, I, I kind of noted that uh, 
in the OSCs, uh, and you guys are included in a way in your projects, through your projects, the number of, pro uh, the, the number of activities we are doing that relate to uh, medical and healthcare application is uh, pretty extensive. I just had a, a meeting with a company uh, you know, in medical space this afternoon. Um, uh, they, they had come to look at our K-Health technology. And uh, so we are looking at uh, using low-cost sensors and mobile phone for uh, predicting rehospitalization of chronic heart patients, ADHF. Um, we are looking at uh, uh, taking that same issue for asthma and uh, allergy prediction. And in that case, we are talking about uh, taking the, uh, uh, you know, and this is particularly going to be focused towards children. So taking the data on the human body, uh, like mobile phone, uh, you know, trying to, uh, you, you know, predict, uh, program on mobile phone, trying to understand the level of wheezing that uh, the child has, or, you know, uh, the other sensors, accelerometer, uh, you know, on the chest telling you about, uh, you know, the, uh, the heavy breathing thing that happens, um, and, 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 you know, kind of helps uh, doctor know about uh, asthma kind of attack versus normal situation. Indoor air quality and outdoor air quality, and smog information and allergy information coming from the public sources, uh, and the tweets, and the um, uh, hospital visits and records of hospital visits, the public health records. We try to combine all of that in prediction of uh, asthma and management of asthma, as an example. Other you guys already heard, heard of Pedos and its application, whereby we are working on, uh, you know, uh, drug abuse, epidemiology, again analysis of social data in that context. Um, uh, we are working on um, uh, extraction, uh, you know, computer assisted coding and other things for, and, you know, from understanding clinical notes and Sujan has worked on extracting uh, relationships, uh, side effects and adding to ontology when that was not known. So, automatic or uh, semi-automatic uh, enhancement of ontology and knowledge basis is very powerful thing. Again, those are the things that we are working on with regards to healthcare data, clinical data, and so on and so forth. We have a lot of other projects in biomedicine also that complement clinical or health-oriented stuff. So anyway, overall it will be very exciting, so come to that. On Friday, rather than having a formal class, I will be available uh, for consultation or as an office hour, and so, uh, you guys are welcome to come about and discuss, but uh, since many of you will attend tomorrow's afternoon, three to five here, uh, I'll, I'll give you that time off so that you can work on other projects. And then we'll announce what we'll do next Tuesday. All right, any questions? All right, so we have now plenty of time to do this um, uh, little survey here. Who wants to take this to the office? Gaurish, okay. you want to take it to the office? Okay, all right, so one of you, so guys, take your time here on the um, stuff and uh, reflect on the important thing uh, that you can use in this survey is to also give feedback, not just to me, but to the institution. Uh, remember in the very first class, I talked to you about uh, uh, trying to have participatory uh, class, not the class where I come here and give the lectures and um, uh, do you, uh, you know, give you midterm and final exams. But to get you involved, um, this is not exactly an online course here, uh, but it is certainly a participatory course. So try to uh, also uh, see if you have feedback uh, for uh, for the educational system per se, and how what we are achieving uh, through this kind of class, and whether that worked for you or it did not work for you, right? Right? Uh, Zero two. Yeah. Why don't you pass this? Uh, make sure everybody is gotten that right. Otherwise, your thing is not.